Hi, I'm Bob Hanlon, here to talk to you today about the end of the road to entropy. And the end of the road came with Ludwig Boltzmann, and there's a specific question I want to address with regards to Boltzmann. The question is, what led him to his probabilistic theory of entropy? Let's find out. Again, the key milestones on the road to entropy ended with the development of the kinetic theory of gases by three scientists in the second half of the 19th century. You had Rudolf Clausius in Switzerland, James Clerk Maxwell in England, and then Ludwig Boltzmann in Austria. We're focusing on Boltzmann today, but I want to review briefly what these three did, specifically around the critical question of what does the velocity distribution of the gas molecules look like? So Clausius started off looking at this, and he said that all molecules have the same speed. This was his assumption. He knew that they had different speeds, but for mathematical simplicity, this was his assumption. And they were just bouncing back and forth between two parallel plates. Based on this and other simplifying assumptions, he found that the absolute temperature of the gas is proportional to the kinetic energy of the molecules. James Clerk Maxwell then took it to a higher level. He said instead of having all of the gas molecules at the same velocity, that they have a distribution. Specifically, he said that the distribution of each component of velocity in the x, y, and z directions is Gaussian in nature. Historians believe that this was an educated guess that he was able to prove later. I won't get into that history here now, but it's quite interesting. So here's the famous Gaussian distribution around x, y, and z component of velocity. If you take this assumption for each one of these component velocities and you look at total velocity here as being the this, this sum here of the x, y, and z components, you can derive the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution uh, of, the, uh, of the gas molecules. Number of atoms here as a function of the velocity of the atoms, and here are the fame-shaped curves here. I won't get into the mathematics now. Ludwig Boltzmann then took it to a higher level, looking at the distribution of the energy in the gas molecule system, showing that the distribution of the number of atoms or molecules in the gas is proportional uh, to this function of the energy of that level. I won't go, go into those details either, but they were very groundbreaking work that he did. Ludwig Boltzmann then took it to another level. He, he looked at entropy specifically, and he said that a system of moving gas atoms and molecules based on the mathematics that he had just completed, no matter the starting velocity, always, this is a big word, always moves towards the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. He said, that furthermore, that this natural movement corresponds to an increase in entropy, which led him to say that entropy must always increase or remain constant. So what he was really saying here was that the, and again, the mathematics were very difficult here, the initial movement of the velocity distribution is always towards the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. Here at time zero are colliding gas molecules, and then he looked at time t equals one, and again looked at that distribution, and he said this direction always moved in the direction of the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. So now enter into this situation a famous Austrian scientist, Joseph Loschmidt. He was called the gadfly. Who called him this? Stephen Brush. Stephen Brush, great historian of this time period. He defined gadflies as follows. Gadflies are outspoken critics who challenge the ideas of geniuses, forcing them to revise and improve those ideas, resulting in new knowledge for which the genius gets the credit while the gadfly is forgotten. So what was it that Loschmidt did in analyzing Boltzmann's work that led him to become a gadfly in Stephen Brush's eyes? Loschmidt came up with a reversibility paradox. He wasn't the only one. The scientists in England were also contributing to this, but Loschmidt was probably one of the more famous ones and direct ones. What he said was, again, he looked at this system from the previous slide, gas molecules from going from t equals zero to t equals one going to the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. He looked at that and he said, wait a minute. Let's look at this time equals t equals one and let's look at the distribution there and take t1 distribution here. Then do the following. If you see the motion here, look at the arrows here. I went through and did this, changed all of the motions into the opposite direction reverse the velocities and make this equal to t equals zero. 
If you reverse this system and call that t equals zero, what happens? What happens is that it no longer goes towards the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. It goes in the other direction. It goes back to where we started. And in this direction, entropy decreases. Wow, so Ludwig Boltzmann looked at this and said, you know, you're right. But he declared that this would be a highly improbable event and set about proving it. His mathematics were huge here. Again, I'm not going to go into it, but he brought probability to address the mathematics, probability theory based on permutations. And what he ended up with was a fun, fundamental change in the na nature of entropy from must always increase to almost certain to increase. Well, almost certain does not mean 100% certain. Thus entered entropy into the world of probability. The way that Boltzmann captured his findings was reflected in, was shown in his tombstone, famous tombstone in Vienna, Austria, this equation here at the top, which I kind of modified here. Entropy S is equal to the Boltzmann constant times the natural log of W, which is the number of ways that you can put a system together. Again, this is based purely on probability theory. It's fascinating to read. This concludes the review of the key milestones on the road to entropy, starting with the steam engine back in, in the 1700s, leading all the way up to Boltzmann's uh, work in probabilistic theory. Thank you very much for listening to this. Naturally, I'm going to end by saying that I go into a lot more detail in all of these concepts in my book, Block by Block, The Historical and Theoretical Foundations of Thermodynamics. In the year 2022, next year, I'm going to start covering a wide range of different topics in thermodynamics now that I'm done with the road to entropy. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you again for listening. Take care. Bye-bye.